standing on the grounds of Tool Slang Prison. It used to be a high school and became a prison during the communist Khmer Rouge. Uh, I want you to go with me. I'm going to take you on a little tour of this place. Following five years of civil war between an American-backed government and a communist-backed guerrilla government, the Khmer Rouge, this high school became a torture prison. These are cells where mostly very innocent people, anyone associated with a, a Westerner, a foreigner, anybody that was educated, anybody who had worked for the American-backed government, um, ministers, Buddhist and Christian alike, were brought to this place. They would remain in these cells for a few days and then eventually would be taken to a torture chamber where they were forced to confess to crimes that they really didn't commit. Physical ed equipment in the schoolyard became gallows. As you walk the halls of this school, the classrooms are filled with these pictures faces of men and women and probably the most shocking striking part of it are pictures of children just little boys and girls they probably weren't guilty of knowing an American or having a doctorate from a university they were guilty by association because their parents were educated or who knows Some of the racers have asked me what I remember about this period of time. We didn't have 24-hour cable news networks that brought the war into our living room. They have said that Vietnam was the first war uh, that was delivered to our living room on the news, but that was in one-minute blocks at 6 o'clock and at 10 o'clock. I vaguely remember that my sisters were concerned that their boyfriends or their friends from high school would be drafted and that was about the extent of what I remember about Vietnam. But at the height of the Vietnam conflict the communists started taking a shortcut through Cambodia, the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and uh, Cambodia was technically a neutral country but they allowed the communists to encroach on their territory. Uh, they were afraid of them. And so the Americans started bombing the Ho Chi Minh Trail to kill Vietnamese and probably killed as many or more Cambodians in that campaign. Eventually the Khmer Rouge overran Phnom Penh in 1975 and began this series of exterminations between 76 and 79. Being the uh, oldest living world racer affords me a little bit different perspective on some of the things that we've seen here in Cambodia. I'm walking around the killing fields. Nine or 10,000 people were executed and buried in these pits, these mass graves that are all around me. This place is wooded and has trails and trees, and it reminds me a little bit of places that I played in when, when I was growing up. And I remember those years from, a, from the 70s, and particularly like 1975 through 1980 when I was just becoming a teenager and I was exploring the countryside on foot and bicycles and motorcycles and uh, having the time of my life. And at the exact same time that I was doing all of that, kids my age were being beaten to death against trees out here in this little patch of woods and uh, the ones doing the killing in a lot of cases were kids that were my age. Between 1975 and 1979 victims from the Tool Slang torture prison they weren't killed at the prison they were brought to this field outside of Phnom Penh uh, their executioners didn't even bother with bullets, they just beat them. One sign said that the, sometimes they would be buried alive and they would sprinkle DDT, a 
chemical, a poison on the bodies to eliminate the stench, but also to kill the folks that were buried alive. If you walk around this ground, and there are little trails that circumvent all of these pits, and all you have to do is look down and you'll see a piece of cloth, and you think, well, that's odd. And you look closely, and there's bone shards, and there are teeth. And the cloth was clothing from the victims. Ironically, it was the Vietnamese who captured Phnom Penh in 1979 and put an end to this. <laughs>